Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, welcome to Ikra Library online session. Thank you all for joining in once again. We're really pleased to have you all on board. Uh, a little bit of a different topic than our usual well-being topic, but they're all relevant. And inshallah, in this journey of growth, we will all pick on something that we can benefit. So thank you once again for joining in. Um, just to give you a little bit of um, information, a bit of an update about Ikra Library. Uh, over the last seven, eight months, Alhamdulillah, Ikra Library has evolved. Uh, we have had various sessions on well-being, um, coaching, um, timekeeping, self-discipline, and also um, conscious parenting as well. Um, so we thank all of you for your support and thank um, the Almighty Allah for giving us this opportunity. And inshallah, we can all benefit wherever we are globally as well. Um, this online platform has been amazing. And as we say, the pandemic has got a silver lining and Alhamdulillah, we've all tried to uh, make the most of this pandemic as well in whatever ways we can. Uh, we thank all our beautiful speakers um, who have taken the time out, um, beautiful souls around the world. You found them, um, you've attended the session and you've seen each of them are amazing. Um, they've been given a gift, alhamdulillah, by Allah, and they're using that gift to help the community, to help the, um, all of us globally in this self-development journey. So thank you to all of our beautiful speakers, all of you for your support as well. Um, just a little bit more information about the session uh, with um, Sister Sister Sukaina Tawa, which is today. Um, Sister Sukaina Tawa is an expert in conscious parenting. Uh, she will tell a little bit more information about herself, how she started this journey. Um, this is a third session that we've held with Sister Sukaina Tawa, and we thank her for her dedication and her time as well. Um, those of you that have missed the first two sessions, the first one was on um, connection of a correction. Um, the second was the second one was about healing inner child wounds. So that was um, the all really core topics um, that needs to be covered as well. And Sister Sukaina has covered them really beautifully. Uh, we do have the Ikra Library um, Google Drive where we have got all these sessions uh, by our beautiful speakers all recorded on there. Um, if you do want the, the details, I can pass that to you. We also have the Ikra Library YouTube channel. So please do go on there, subscribe to the Ikra Library YouTube channel, and you can get the updates when we load the videos on there. We will, inshallah, do that as well. We do have the Instagram page as well on Ikra Library, so please follow us on there, and we will try and keep you updated, um, as well as the Ikra Library WhatsApp group as well. So um, whatever you prefer, let me know, or however way you want to keep in touch with Ikra Library, that would be really appreciated, and we can share the different programs that we've got. Uh, we do have sessions for ladies, ladies and men as well. Um, also, we do have sessions for children as well. Um, so if you would like to be added to the children's WhatsApp group, um, Ikra Library one, we can add you to that. Uh, we have got a session that we're starting for the youths as well as a trial. So we would like your support if you do have any youths um, within those age 12 plus as well. And we can um, give you an update on that session as well. So without taking any further time, I will pass on to the expert um, to cover today's topic, which we, we we all believe as myself as well and all of you that it is a very important topic um, and inshallah sister Sukaina will um, update us and give us a bit more information and help us with this journey of parenting so thank you all and then I will pass on to sister Sukaina. Assalamu alaikum everyone um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, sharing uh, my journey uh, of conscious parenting. And one of the things that I discovered was emotional coaching, which is not even part of my course. But as I was doing research, I came across this part of uh, emotional coaching, which is a vital part to address children's emotions. You know, when we talk about inner child needs, you know, so I talk about, do you see me? Do you hear me? Do I matter? And do you love me? So the important skill is emotional coaching. How you talk to your children really, really matters. So today we'll discuss different types of parenting. We will talk about emotional coaching, how important and vital it is to talk in a correct manner. Now, after I say this, I also would like to say it's tough to do. It is hard to do it, but with practice, you can do it. And uh, if you make mistakes, just apologize to your child. And I do mention this in the PowerPoint that I'm going to discuss. 
I'll tell you something that just today morning on our ladies group, one of the groups that I'm in, somebody um, wrote a problem that, you know, my daughter received a love letter and I'm freaking out. What do I do? What do I do? So I told her, do not do that. The more you can self-regulate as a parent, it is vital not to make a big deal out of normal things in life. So children will have crushes, they'll have issues, and they'll be approached by people. I'll tell you an example of emotional coaching, how important it is to have these conversations with your children so they know you are transparent, you are open uh, to these conversations. So they'll come to you if you open up and if you don't have this cultural conditioning of being you know, uncomfortable, how can I talk? My mother never talked to me about all these issues and now I'm so uncomfortable. So you need to understand your self-regulation is important. So my son, he's 17 years old now, two years ago, he came uh, with a rose on a Valentine's day and he told me a girl proposed me and I just told uh, the girl, uh, I value our friendship but uh, my values do not allow me to commit. I cannot commit to a relationship. I just am okay with the friendship. And he ended it over there. Just yesterday, he told me a girl tried to hug him in the school and he pushed back and he said, excuse me, uh, my values do not allow me to have physical touch. So I, want, I respect our friendship and I, and I, and I like you as a, as a friend, but I do not want to do anything with this physical closeness that you are having. So why I'm telling you this, why I'm sharing this is because if you know how to have a conversation with your child, you can self-regulate your emotions. Don't make it a big deal. These are normal things. You have to talk about these things with your children so they can be emotionally mature, spiritually mature. If you have to talk about these things, if you learn to talk about these things in the correct manner, then they will not take it as a big deal. So this is just to explain that how we take life, they're going to take it as well. I'm sure when we were young, we were having crushes and we were having lots of stories and so many things were happening. But explain to the child, share your experience and explain to the child, this is what happened to me. And you know, sometimes parents don't know what to do because they feel nervous and they feel scared. Sometimes I heard one of the persons in my group telling me that my mother blamed me for all those people who are approaching me. So she went for comfort and solution to the parent, but the parents started freaking out and started blaming the child. So poor child, they need, they don't know what to do. They are little, they are young, they are not mature. We are the adults. So let's play that part. And that's why I thought emotional coaching was a key to this. Uh, uh, communication is key. If you know how to validate your children, listen more, talk less, be there, you know, and don't take it personally, even if your child shouts at you, right? So we're gonna talk about all these things and I'm going to uh, start the presentation. So a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Emotional coaching, yeah? Communicating effectively with your child is very important. So today I have been vulnerable because I really care for our community and I feel your pain. And I understand that parenting in this time is very challenging, right? But we have to be smarter because our children have devices. They can Google anything and they know everything by the age of 10 or 12. Right, So they know more than us, but when we learn to talk about it as a normal thing, we, are, we teach them to articulate, we give them the tools to communicate, which is very, very important, right? If you open up and you wanna have this conversation with them, then they will be able to approach you when they have something uh, difficult or a challenging situation in their life because they know that, you know, my parent is Zen. They're not going to make a, a big deal about it, right? So let's just go on. So what is emotional coaching? So there are five steps. Uh, and these five steps are by Dr. Laura Markham. Uh, I'll also share her book later. I forgot uh, the name of the book, but the five steps of emotional coaching are be aware of emotions, of your child's emotions, use emotions to connect, step number two. Step number three, label the emotion. Step number four is communicate and uh, empathize and understand 
the emotion of your child. Step number five is set, set limits and teach your child how to problem solve, all right? So this sounds complicated, but it's not. So Dr. Um, John Gottman has a book uh, called Raising an Emotionally Intelligent Child. All right, this is the heart of parenting. If we can learn emotional coaching, then you can communicate clearly with your child and understand that you cannot be enmeshed with their emotions, all right? So how are we gonna go about it? So five essential steps of emotional coaching are these, and then we have to understand. Be aware of your child's emotion. Recognize your child's expression of emotion as a perfect moment for intimacy and teaching. Listen with empathy, validate your child's feelings, help your child learn to label their emotions with words, set limits when you are helping your child to solve problems or deal with upsetting situations appropriately. So what we usually see is the behavior, right? Remember the anger iceberg I did in conscious parenting talk? right? So what we see is the behavior, the fighting, the screaming, the throwing, the hitting, but they are needs that are not met. What are the underlining needs, right? I need a break. I need love. I'm overwhelmed. I'm tired. I want my toy. You aren't understanding me, right? I need to release my emotions. And this is the way I know how. So if they're little kids, you know, they'll go into a tantrum because they don't know how to feel. They don't know how to handle their big feelings. But that, so that's why as parents, we have to be great role models at emotional coaching. And this is a skill anyone can learn. So it's not difficult at all. Once I talk about it, you will understand. You can make some notes because these are important things. I will share the slides, but even then, if you want to make some notes, you can do that. So your child's mastery of understanding and regulating their emotions will help them to succeed in life in myriad of different ways. They will be more self-confident, perform better in social academic situations, and even become physically healthier. That means you are a surrogate for, your, uh, for emotional coaching. Children don't know how to handle their big emotions. You're gonna show them how to face their challenging emotions, how to handle their emotions. You will tell them, it's okay to be mad. It's okay to be sad. I understand, I'm here for you. What do you need? How can I help you, right? So be there, validate their emotions. Don't dismiss them. Don't tell them it's not a big deal because we see life differently. For children, things can be larger than life. They're tiny, especially the little kids, you know, five-year-old, four-year-old, 10-year-old, depending how they see life. Something might be very scary for a five-year-old, but as an adult, you don't see it as a scary thing. So we have to take that step of teaching them and helping them feel their feelings by not you know, dismissing it. So Put the steps, let's put the steps of emotional coaching and I'll show you how it's done. But it's very important because if you don't know how emotional coaching is done, then you will be raising emotionally intelligent children. And who doesn't want that? Because they will be able to self-regulate. They will be amazing, all right? So teach children to respect by treating them with respect. Show your child respect and understanding in moments when they feel misunderstood, upset, or frustrated. Talk through their feelings with them. Try to understand their source. Be aware of your child's responses to your method of working through the moment with them. In difficult interactions, make your child feel your empathy by patiently validating their feelings, getting to the root of their expression. Instead of focusing on your parental agenda, which we usually have, in these situations, show your child that you respect their attempts to solve problems, guide them and trust and uh, trust them and show them affection. Work through these experiences together. So understand as a parent, you are a leader. You have to role model this. You don't get overwhelmed, all right? So when our children get upset, most of us get upset too. If the child is angry, 
I feel angry, I feel defensive, right? So what people do is, you know, if the teacher has lashed out and your child is mad and they come and tell you, many parents will pick up the phone and fire the teacher. How dare you talk like this to my child? So you can see the enmeshment here, right? The parent doesn't know how to self-regulate. They get affected when the child is mad or sad. So they want to rescue the child. Instead of rescuing the child, you need to understand, you need to self-regulate. He's upset at something else. Make sure that you make them feel better by telling them, I understand you feel really mad, but I want you to go and talk to the teacher that you feel hurt. So, or instead of doing that, you ask them for the solution because we want children to be leaders. We don't want them to depend on us. We are not supposed to give them solutions. We want them to think out of the box. And if we start this at a very young age, you will see how differently children take their power, right? So emotions aren't good or bad. And that's why I put this lovely picture here. They are signals to us. Our body is bringing our attention to something, maybe letting you know that something is off or out of balance. Ask yourself, what is this feeling trying to tell me? If you feel stressed, that means I need to slow down. I need to self-care. If you are sad, it's okay. I need to love and to look for joy and gratitude. But actually, I'd like to say here, if you're sad, do not rescue the children if they're sad. Let them feel the sadness because as much as you feel the sadness, the same amount of joy you'll be able to feel. So emotions are like waves. If you guys remember, I discussed this. They come and they go. It's just a feeling. It will come and it will go. They will understand self-regulation. They will feel better, maybe after two hours, four hours, right? So if you're anxious, what is it trying to tell you? It's trying to tell you I need to calm down. I need to do ground myself. I remind myself I'm safe and I can do that in the safety of my home. So emotions aren't dangerous. That's what we need to understand. The only way to resolve emotions is to go through them. And when your child is feeling big emotions, that's an important learning opportunity. Teaching your child a healthy approach to emotions means coaching him to be aware of his feelings, to accept them and express them uh, responsibly. All feelings are acceptable. All behaviors are not. Relationships and connections are, and connection are the foundation of learning, right? For learning, you need these two things, connection and relationships. So we ought to get respect and affection and it's a part of family life. And we also have to have the same setting in schools. Unfortunately, we don't have it in all schools. Kids have a heightened sense of dignity and respect, and it's very important for them. So very important, very, very important to model respect for children, right? So yelling, shouting, when we get mad is absolutely not acceptable. So the first step of emotional coaching is calm yourself down first. Take that pause button, stop and, stop and drop your agenda. Take a deep breath and before you engage with your child, remind yourself that your goal is to calm the storm for your child, not escalate it. Don't take your child's emotions emotions personally. This isn't about you. If she's screaming, I hate you, this is about her, her tangled up feelings and still developing brain. Calm yourself with the mantra. It's not an emergency. This is an opportunity to be there for my child when she's upset or when he's upset. Notice the sensations in your body, in your own body, so that you're, you are aware of what you are feeling right? Notice if you feel annoyance or the urge to make your child's feelings go away. Decide that your goal is to use this opportunity to build a closer relationship with your child and teach him helpful lessons about accepting and responding to emotions. So what is in your circle of control? Just your emotions, your behavior, not your child's behavior. So don't take it personally. Connect to create safety. Your child needs to uh, let himself feel those big feelings instead of stuffing them down. That's how they'll begin to heal. 
your job is to help him or her feel safe so he can let himself feel deeply, reach out to connect emotionally, and if you can, even physically, right? So create that safety space, touch your child, hug your child, hold their hand, and your tone of voice is important when your child is mad or sad, how you're talking to them, right? Give your child the verbal or non-verbal message, I will help you you are safe, you can do this, you can handle this. If you breathe slowly and deeply, your child will usually begin to breathe slowly as well. So you see, you are connected as a mother. So be careful how you are handling it. Empathize, create safety by helping your child feel understood, <clears throat> match your child's tone. When kids feel uh, that uh, you really don't understand how upset they are, then they can let themselves feel, uh, they, they can let themselves uh, feel the emotions uh, and they don't need to escalate. So welcome the emotions, reflect them by mirroring the child's tone. So if the child says something, repeat what they are saying. That's what mirroring is. Actually, as a coach, we do this a lot as coaches, right? We mirror, when a client comes, we mirror what they say. So you seem a little worried about this sleepover or you look so mad, reiterate, that means repeat, mirror. So they feel and uh, heard and understood. Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. You, you are fed up with your brother going into your room and taking your gum. If your child is expressing anger at you, resist the urge to tell her to be appropriate. Instead, acknowledge the feelings, invite her to tell you how upset she is. So they can be shouting sometimes, or they can be, you know, rude sometimes. But at that time, you need to understand, don't start preaching and teaching or sermonizing at that time. Give them the safety space, empathize with their feelings, let them feel what they are feeling. Do not start teaching here. By modeling self-regulation, they are learning automatically. The learning is happening, okay? So you can uh, acknowledge by observing and saying, I see how upset you are about this. Describe what your child is physically expressing and help him feel seen and heard and can either help you by naming the emotion or intentionally uh, intentionally avoid it. I see you are biting your lips. Sometimes children don't tell you they are upset. So you see their body language, yeah? You can see you are biting. I can see you are biting your lip. I can see you look worried. Uh, I can see that, right? So you need to articulate that. Your arms are crossed over, your chest is like this, your brows are tight like this. I wonder what's going on. Acknowledge their perspective, okay? So you wish that this is what's, uh, what you wanted. So you need to acknowledge, you need to uh, give them the words so they can have the words and they learn from you. So if your child is crying your, uh, and the words can distract your child when they are crying. So be very careful when you use, don't use too many words, yeah? You can say, um, I can see you are upset, okay? H how can I make this better, okay? You are safe, um, I'm here. Do you need anything? Uh, it's good to cry sometimes. So when the child is crying, don't stop them from crying. Tell them it's good to feel those tears. Let them out. Letting go is important. So they will not store those emotions in their mind, in their body, in their energy, because once they store those toxic emotions, they are going to get mental health problems, God forbid, anxiety disorder, uh, depression, you know, sadness, right? They need to sit with it, but they need to feel safe to do so. So we, we are going to give them that space. Double check with your child, right? So you need to say that, uh, I see you are upset, am I right? Okay, so double checking. Sometimes you can say to your child, uh, I can see you are mad, am I right? So the child says, of course I'm mad. Okay, so you need to tell, tell your child, elaborate more. Uh, your child may, be, may correct you and might say, I'm not, I'm disappointed, I'm mad. And in that case, you try again. 
if possible, use your child's exact words so they know you are listening. I'm sorry. Let's say you can say, I'm sorry, Fatima. I see now how mad you are. Tell me, tell me more. Why? So tell me more will really help. Sometimes we don't understand. We just assume things, right? Because we are not good at listening. So when you tell the child, tell me more, that's a good idea. They are going to articulate. They are going to open the floodgates and start crying and tell you why they are mad. Sometimes it's to do with you and sometimes it's something else, right? Or a child may correct you. I'm not mad, even though it's clear that you were accurate in your perception. And that's a signal that your child is feeling judged or analyzed and rather, um, rather than understood. Acknowledge the correction, start over, and uh, connecting more as you describe the child's perspective. I hear you, Fatima, you are not mad. Let me see if I can understand. You wanted this, right? Don't fight about what your child is actually feeling. What is important is that she feels that you are on her side, trying to understand her. And you know, this is how children will learn self-regulation when you are present, excuse me, and acknowledging them. Deepen the conversation uh, to help your child feel understood. You can do this by offering support, validating your child's emotion, or simply inviting your child to tell you more. Validating doesn't mean necessarily that you agree with their opinion or their perspective, only that you understand why your child, uh, why your child would feel this way. So you could validate by saying, ouch, that must have hurt. Oh, Sophia, no wonder you are upset. It could really be embarrassing uh, to have your teacher say that. So this is how you validate. You use something like this, right? This is just an example, but I'm sure you understand what validation is. You don't dismiss their feelings. You don't undermine their feelings. You acknowledge, you mirror, and you say to them, tell me more. Okay, so I hear you are upset because of something and that's why you did this. And is there anything else? That's another way to help them articulate, help them tell you more, okay? Is there anything else? Asking if there is anything else often opens the floodgates to get, the, uh, to, get to the here, to the heart of why your child is upset. He may start with uh, what a lousy mother you are or for making oatmeal again and end up telling you that he thinks you love his brother more or he's being bullied at school. So you see, this is very important. The child first will not tell you the real thing. They will might blame you or say something, but if you keep listening and asking, uh, tell me more, is there anything else? When you do that, they feel safe to share and they don't feel attacked. So they start feeling their feelings and start telling you more. And this gives you a chance to build up your relationship, right? Thank you for telling me this. I'm sorry that what I did upset you so much. Please tell me more. When your child is angry at you, let him know you are listening you may find out something that will transform your relationship for the better. Or you may find that his anger has nothing to do with you after all. So he will tell you or she will tell you that they were mad at you. That's what happens to me in my life. You know, My son, when he's angry, I just say, say silent or I offer help. Do you need a hug? Do you need me? Do you need time out? Like, you know, you need your time alone and I leave. And then after 10 minutes, he'll come and just say, mom, I'm so sorry I lashed out at you. I'm so, I'm so guilty. I feel so bad. I was so mad. I was so rude. And I would just hug him and I'd say, it's okay. I do feel disrespected. If I feel disrespected, then I will keep that value uh, system and, and explain to him, this is our house value. Respect is something very high on my value system. So I did feel disrespected. Can you please be more kind next time? I appreciate that. So I appreciate that you realized what you did was wrong and I, I, I'm, I'm here for you and I, I'm your you know, friend and I do not want you to uh, feel offended, but I want to tell you that that was disrespectful. So by acknowledging what happened is over time, he stopped that as much as he can. He will just tell me, I need some time alone. Please just 
let me be, then he will talk to me later. So describe the incident without judging so your child feels understood. Very important, very, very important. Validation is key and that's why I'm telling you this. So telling the story helps. So when you are doing this, you know, you need to reiterate, repeat. So tell the story, telling the story helps the child calm down, reflect and integrate the emotions as emotional experience that was processed by the right frontal lobe is articulated and understood by the verbal and more rational left frontal lobe. So remember the emotional brain, that's the right side. When you start telling them their experience back and mirroring it, you are going to activate their left frontal lobe. That means you are integrating the brain. You are making a whole brain child. You are making something which is called emotional intelligence. You are taking the emotions and you are articulating it. You are explaining and now you are creating a whole brain child, a child who is emotionally intelligent. You can only do this by verbalizing and telling them back their story. So let yourself feel some of what your child is feeling while you still stay centered. If you really feel the emotion with your child, then you may get tears in your eyes at um, how heartbreaking this is this must be for your child this increases the connection between you and your child and this helps the trust that you will build with your child support your child to problem solve all right so i want you to understand we need to uh, make children independent so don't give them the solutions instead tell them to look for a solution so let them Resist to rescue them. Resist the urge to tell them what to do and how to problem solve. Instead, let them be in charge. Tell them, what do you think you should do, right? So this is a tough problem. I wonder what you could do now to make the things better. When you do that, you create uh, you know, independence. Children learn to trust their own decisions at age five, at age seven. Now, when they are teenager, their confidence will, you know, shoot to the sky because this is what they we want. We want them to understand that they can actually solve their problems. That can only happen if you don't rescue them, right? Unless if they are stuck and they don't know and they told, tell you, okay, maybe they give you a solution which is not actually matching the problem. It's not going to help. Then you can give them a suggestion or give them two, three suggestions, then they can choose from it. So at least they own the decision that they chose uh, that solution. So this is a very important part of emotional coaching, right? Support your child to problem solve. Do not rescue them, teach them, uh, Problem solving, very important. Of course, if you were part of the problem, uh, uh, your child was upset about, uh, let's say, feel free to suggest uh, for the uh, solution. I know it's disappointing that you that we can't practice your jump shot tonight because of my meeting. How about we can make a deal to spend all morning on Saturday working on it? If your child still seems upset and negative, it, and isn't open to problem solving, that's a sign. He hasn't worked through the emotions yet. So this is a very important point. Keep this in mind. If they are not ready to problem solve, the emotion has not gone by yet. If they are still processing it. You need to go back to the earlier steps. It's time consuming, I know, yes, but you'll notice that as you get more comfortable, you'll move through the steps quickly, even better. You'll see your child get better at expressing emotions in a constructive way. Emotion coaching raises kids who are more emotionally intelligent and better at regulating their emotions. It also helps you to stay calm when your child is upset and so creates a more peaceful household, less drama, more solutions, and a lot more love. So, those were five steps, but I have made it easier. Now, this is by Laura Markham. And Dr. Laura Markham says there are three steps. So what does she say? She says first step is uh, emotional coaching. First step is empathize, label, and validate. So I see you. I see you are upset. I hear uh, you are sad or, you know, are you feeling mad? Whatever it is, these are the statements you can use to empathize, label, and validate. First step 
empathize, label, and validate. Second step is deal with the bad behavior. So you can say it's okay to feel mad, but it's never okay to hit. So here, we are going to show their, our values here. What we're going to do is we remind our children that it's okay, all uh, emotions are acceptable, but all behaviors are not. So you are making sure that your values are still intact and they are also being validated and they know that they are seen and they are heard and their feelings matter and they matter, all right? Then the third is problem solving. So the best way is to, uh, you know, tell the children to problem solve, help them, you know, give them suggestions, especially if they are four, five, three, something like that. You know, the younger they are, they'll get this very quickly because, you know, children as, no matter how young they are, they are very intuitive. If they are three, four, five, six, they are very intuitive before age seven. They are still very connected to their true self. So if you can do this earlier, it's amazing. Even if you have not done it, it's okay. No matter what age they are, they will be uh, able to identify and, and be able to do this. So tell them what happened, make use, um, make, make you, what happened to make you feel this way. So help them problem solve. You can suggest or you can let them look for a solution. So I've taken this from a book called Raising an Emotionally Intelligent Child uh, by Dr. John Gottman. And it's a very important story which I wanted to share. So one of the things he mentions in the book is be aware of children's emotions. David, David, a father um, in one of our parenting groups told how an incident with a seven-year-old daughter helped him understand the roots of her anger and showed him what she needed. So Carly had been in a dark mood all day. He explained, picking fights with four-year-old brother, taking offense at all sorts of imagined insults, including the classic, Jimmy's uh, looking at me again with every interaction. Carly cast Jimmy as the villain. Although Jimmy seemed to be doing nothing wrong, when David asked Carly why she was so angry at her easygoing sibling, his question elicited only silence and tears. The more he probed, the more defensive Carly became. At the end of the day, David went to Carly's room to help her get ready for bed. He found her pouting again. He opened the bureau to get her pajamas and found just one set clean, a tattered outgrown pair with feet uh, in the bottom. Do you, do you think this will fit? He asked with a weak smile as he held them up for his daughter, lanky daughter to see. David fetched a scissors and together, uh, and together the and cut the bottom of the pajamas. I can't believe how quickly you are growing up, he told her. You are getting such a big girl. Five minutes later, Carly joined the family in the kitchen for a bedtime snack. She was like a different kid, David remembers. She was chatty, upbeat. She even managed to crack a joke for Jimmy. Something happened during the business with the pajama, but I'm not sure what. David told the other parents after tossing it around the group. However, the answer was clearer to him. A serious, sensitive kid, Carly had always been jealous of charming, sweet-natured Jimmy. And for some reason on that day in particular, she may have been needing reassurance of her own special place in the family. Perhaps she wanted to know that David loved her in a way that's different from the way he loved Jimmy. Perhaps her father's sweet acknowledgement that she's growing up Dana, you there? Just 
going to message again. I think uh, her mic or internet might be a bit of a problem. Just bear with us a few minutes. Yeah, okay. you there? Sorry. It's okay. I don't know what happened. <laughs> All right. I'll just screen share again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, ladies, we were here. All right. I was talking about how we should be looking at children's emotions and how important it is to uh, be present as a parent, right? So, among children about the age of seven and younger, clues or to feeling are often revealed in fantasy play, make believe using different characters, scenes and props, allow children to safely with toys. And she started talking about her feelings with her doll. And this is how he reiterates, you know, telling us in his book, so I have just written the story and he says, I remember my own daughter Moria at age four, playing in the bathtub with the doll, she told me, Barbie is really scared when you get mad. It was her way of opening up an important conversation between us regarding what makes me angry, how my voice gets louder when I am angry, how that makes her feel. Grateful for the chance to talk it over, I assured Barbie and my daughter that I didn't mean to scare her. And just because I get angry sometimes doesn't mean that I don't love her. Because Moria was talking on the persona of, the, of Barbie, I talked directly to the doll and comforted her. This, I believe, made it easier for Moria to continue talking about how she felt when I got angry. So now this is a very important point. When you have little kids under seven, maybe five, four, three, when they are doing role play or when they're playing with their toys, keep your ears open because they are going to talk about their feelings when they are doing these role plays, when they play with their doll, when they are in their imaginary world. Still, it's common for children to act out their fears through games with serious themes like abandonment, illness, injury, or death. It is, any, it is any wonder that children like to pretend and they have the strength and magic of mighty Morphin Power Ranger. Alert parents can take cues from the fears they hear expressed in their child's play. Then later on, they can address these fears and offer reassurances. So keep your ears peeled for the children's fears or any other big emotions and then you can discuss with them later on. Hints of children's emotional distress may also show up in behavior such as overeating. If you see your child changing their behavior, right? So you can see them overeating, loss of appetite, nightmares, complaints of headaches or stomach aches. Children who have been potty trained for some time may suddenly start bedwetting again. If you suspect that your child's feeling sad, angry or fearful, it's helpful to try to put yourself to feel your, when you feel your hearts go out to your child and you know 
uh, you are feeling what your child is feeling. You are experiencing empathy, which is the foundation of emotion coaching. You can stay with your child in this emotion, even though at times the feeling may be difficult or uncomfortable, you can take the next step, which is recognize the emotional moment has a chance to build trust and offer guidance. So recognizing the emotion as, so this is an opportunity for you to connect. That's what you need to understand, right? So there's a Chinese ideogram representing opportunity is encompassed, excuse me, in the ideogram for crisis. Nowhere in the linking of these two concepts is more apt than in our role as parents. Whether the crisis is a broken balloon, a failing math grade, or betrayal of a friend, such as negative experiences can serve a superb opportunity to empathize, to build intimacy with your children, and to teach them ways to handle their feelings. Right? So I'll tell you, we do not teach our children uh, through cause and effect. And that's why we don't understand this part of failing. Like um, uh, it says here, a failing a math grade, right? So one of my children, one of my child had failed one of the big exams in crucial years, like grade 11 or 12. And before they failed this exam, I used to tell, you know, study, 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 but my child was not listening. They had to fail. So when my child failed, that was the day the child realized, oh my God, now I have to reset. So the whole summer went in learning, in, I um, mean, you know, revision. And then from uh, then onwards, this child of mine never failed any exam, but that learning had to take place. Failing had to occur. That can only happen if we teach through cause and effect. So let them take their decisions let them fail because failure is first opportunity in learning. Let them feel bad or let them own their fa failures. It's not about feeling bad, but it's let them be in charge of their life. If they are going to uh, not going to study, they will fail and they will not feel good about it. But when they learn this lesson to cause and effect, you will never have to ask your child to study again. Why? Because when they fail, they will learn to pick themselves back up, which is emotional regulation, very important self-regulation, learning to self-soothe from a bad experience, sad experience, um, you know, negative experience, but they will happen only if you are holding them in a safe environment, not that now your child failed. So you start criticizing them and telling them, you see, I told you to study, you didn't listen and now you failed. Now that was not the time to do that. In fact, you never criticize the child, right? That was the time where you hold a safe place and tell them, it's okay. I know you are scared. I know you feel mad or sad. I'm here for you. Give them a safe space to grow. And that's how you can do emotional co coaching. This is an opportunity for you to create bonding, a teaching moment where you know you will just grow in your relationship. We can look at our children's anger as something other than a challenge uh, to our authority. Kids' fears are no longer evidence for our incompetence as parents. And their sadness doesn't have to represent just one more blasted thing I'm going to have. Offered by emotional. I think, Sukaina, the slide's frozen. The PowerPoint slide, I think, is frozen. Can you hear us, Kena? Can you see the slide now? I think it's starting again as a screen sharing. I think it was frozen before. All right, okay. Thank you. All right. To reiterate an idea offered by emotion coaching, father in the studies said that a child needs this most the, his parents the most when he is sad angry or afraid so you see uh, I, this is very important that when your children are sad angry or afraid the ability to help soothe an upset child can be what makes us feel the most 
you know, feel most like parents. By acknowledging our children's emotions, we are helping them learn skills for soothing themselves, right? Skills that will serve them for a lifetime, right? So one of the things I discovered was that, uh, you know, I was watching a video by Newfield and he said, how can you make parenting easy? The only way you can make parenting easy, he shares here, is not the love of parent for the child. The key is for the ease of parenting is the love of the child for the parent. So when the child feels understood and validated, it increases their connection and love for the parent, which has the biggest impact on the child following their parents' guidelines and leadership. So again, emotional coaching. What does this mean? They don't object. If you're an emotional coach for your child, they don't object to the ch their child's displays of anger, sadness, or fear, nor do they ignore them. Instead, they accept negative emotions as a fact of life and they use emotional moments as opportunities for teaching their kids important life lessons and building closer relationships with them. So this is an opportunity for you to be there for your children, okay? So they can understand these negative emotions are here for you to actually help them, okay? Sorry, we can't see any slide. It's blank completely. Really? Okay, just a second. I'll, I'll do it again. I'll just share again. I don't know why this is happening. Can you guys? It's still blank. Oh, yeah, it started, yeah. So you maybe go back. Right. Okay, so Thank while some try to negative in the whole will go away. Emotions rarely work that way. Instead, negative feelings when children can talk about their emotions, label them, feel understood, may it makes the sense therefore to acknowledge low levels of emotions early on before they escalate into full blown crisis. Very, very important, right? Let's say your five-year-old is very nervous to go to the dentist to hear a day before um, you go to the dentist. Otherwise, you'll have a chair. So if you have a 12-year-old and they feel envious about their friend uh, position in the baseball team, it's better to help them talk over with their feelings so you can help them self-regulate at that and let down over as a row uh, on the field and then the the boys will be fighting because he's going to be and my passion due to being envious when you have levels of emotion this is true for you this is a tip for you make sure you children by self-regulating them you you help them self-regulate you are the surrogate you are going to help them just it also gives families to planning, problem solving. A child's broken toy or a mirror box. You learn that you are his ally and the two of you figure out how to collaborate. And then if big crises happen, um, a Oh, my apologies, ladies. I think yeah. it's um, internet, isn't it, from her side or somewhere? Yeah. Let me just check. Let me just check. I'm still connected to my stuff, right? My internet yes. is okay. Yeah, it just keeps breaking up, but I think um, that's probably the internet, isn't it? Yeah. That's okay, let me just enough. open the door. Maybe that will help. Yeah, just a second. Thank you. Sorry, ladies. All right. Can you see the slides now? Yes, we can see, yeah. All right, so empathic listeners use their eyes 
to watch for physical evidence for their children's emotions. They use imaginations to see the situation from the child's perspective. So very important with emotional coaching is you don't make a big deal out of what your child is going through, even if it is a big deal for you. Secondly, and if you find it something that's not a big deal, even then you cannot dismiss it, right? So they use their words to reflect back in a soothing, non-critical way, what they are hearing to help their child label their emotions, but most importantly, they use their hearts to feel what their child is feeling. Turning into your child's emotions requires that you pay attention to your child's body language, facial expressions, gestures. So you see, it's not only the words, the child sees you as well. So if you are empathizing, but you don't mean it, they can even see it from your body language. And you have to see their body language as well. If they are not expressing, then see their facial expressions, see their body language. So this is being more intuitive, you know, more um, tuned in. Surely we, you have been, uh, you have seen the furrowed bro, the tense jaw, or the tapping foot before. What does it tell you about your child's feelings? right so be aware that the children can read your body language so be careful you know when your goal is to talk in a relaxed attentive manner adopt a posture so that they can see come to their eye level especially their little ones you know under five or five or above even like you know five six years you can do this you have to come to their eye level and um you know breathe in a slow manner, deep breaths, relax, focus, listen attentively to your child and show concern, even if it is a little thing, because this is how emotional coaching is done. You are present and you are available, ready to listen, not dismiss, okay? As your child reveals his feelings, reflect back what you hear. So name and notice, okay, this is, this is important. Notice their feelings, label them, teach them. This will assure your child that you are listening carefully and that you think his feelings are valid. Here is an example, okay? Uh, when a birthday package arrived in mail for Nikki, his four-year-old brother, Kyle, reacts with anger. That's not fair, Kyle protests. Typ typically, the boy's dad responds by explaining that in time, it will be fair. When your birthday comes and grandma will probably send you a package Two, Dad says, while this statement certainly explains the logic uh, of the situation, it flatly denies Kyle his feelings. Now, on top of the feelings, he is jealous about the package. So Kyle probably feels angry, understandable position, right? He is unavailable for his son and he's dismissing his feelings as well. Imagine how differently Kyle might feel if his dad were to respond to his outburst with a simple observation. You wish grandma had sent you a package too. I bet that makes you kinda jealous. Yeah, that's right, Kyle might think. Even though it's Nikki's birthday, I'm supposed to be cool about this. I feel jealous. Dad understands. Now, Kyle is uh, in a better spot to, to hear his dad's explanation. And that, and these things, uh, even out in time. He will understand if you validate, okay, I understand you feel sad and you feel mad and you feel a little bit jealous. So you need to acknowledge that. And the other thing you can do is sharing examples from your own life. So you can tell them, right, you know, when I was little, I felt jealous when my sister got a present and I didn't, but then everything was okay. When my birthday came, even I received a presence. So I know you feel mad and sad or jealous, right? I understand how you feel. Um, however, when your birthday comes, grandma will give you a present as well. So you need to relate to the child by giving your experiences, sharing your point of view. So the child feels understood. Oh, my dad used to feel the same thing. Emotional coaching is to help children label their emotions as they are having them. Um, in the above, jealousy. We, we can define a lot of problems. Again, it's showing unstable. All right. Uh, in the example above, Kyle's dad helped him to identify the unpleasant feeling as jealousy. We can define lots of problems, including tense, worried, hurt, angry, sad, afraid. Providing words in this way can help the children transform and, 
amorphous, scary, uncomfortable feeling into something definable, something that has boundaries and is normal part of everyday life. Anger, sadness, fear become experiences everybody has and everybody can handle. Labeling emotions can go hand in hand with empathy. A good parent sees his child in tears and says, you feel very sad, don't you? Now, not only is the child understood, he has the word to describe his intense feeling as well. So labeling your emotions is key. So if you name it, you can tame it. Studies indicate that the act of labeling emotion can have a soothing effect on the nervous system, helping children to recover more quickly from upsetting incidents. While we are not certain how this soothing effect happens, it's a theory, uh, this is by Dr. John uh, Gopman, talking about emotions as you are experiencing it engages the left lobe of the brain, which is the center of language and logic. So as I told you, the big emotions are from the right brain. And when you start talking and explaining and empathizing, naming and noticing the emotions, you integrate left and right brain, which is what you want. You want to integrate the child's emotions and let them able to self-regulate by naming their emotions. When you do that, you integrate the child's brain and you create a whole brain child. That's why raising children uh, you know, in an emotionally intelligent manner is crucial. This, this in turn may help your child to focus, to calm down. As we have discussed earlier, the implications of teaching a child to self-soothe are enormous, okay? They are enormous. Kids who can calm themselves down from an early age show several signs of emotional intelligence. They are more likely to concentrate better, have better peer relationships, have higher academic achievements and good health as well. So there are four parenting styles, right? The first one, according to Dr. John Gottman, is dismissive parenting. When parents dismiss, dismiss their child's emotions, they seek to brush their child's feelings aside, either by distracting the child, here, here, take the toy, here, here, watch some TV, or ice cream so whenever now the child is sad this is what they have learned from you that when you are sad go have a cookie when you are mad go and have ice cream because this is what they learned right the parent did this in how it impacts the child the child feels as though their feelings are not valid should not be trusted children who are raised like this way grow up to be insecure self-doubting uncomfortable in expressing their feelings so that's why it's important to do it properly. Disapproving parents, right? When parents uh, uh, disapprove of the child's emotions, they judge, criticize their child for expressing their emotions, are seen as weak in the way parents with a disapproving style of parenting feel discomfort, annoyance at their child's emotions and seek to suppress their child's emotions as a result. How does this impact the child? Similar to dismissing parenting, child of disapproving parents also learn to distrust and suppress their feelings, they grow up feeling invalidated and insecure. So these children cannot have high self-confidence, I mean, self-esteem. Lazy fairy parenting. When parents have a lazy fairy approach to their child's feelings, they tend to be uh, permissive, uh, unresponsive to the child's emotions. The child is free to express themselves without restriction or guidance uh, on how to express themselves in a pro-social manner. How does this impact the child? Children grow up lacking with the ability of self-regulation as they have not uh, been Please bear with us. I think um, and parents yeah. coach. They That's fine. I think it's just um, yeah, it's just the internet. I think, Sukaina. 
you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, yeah, it's a little bit bumpy, but yeah, that's fine. I don't think we can hear you anymore. You still there, Sukaina? Sorry, my apologies. Um, I think it's just her internet. I'm just gonna message her again, um, just to join in again. Oh my God, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm so sorry. Are you there to continue? Are you there, Sukaina? Um, can you hear us, Sukaina? I can hear you. Yes, yeah, okay, go on, yeah. All right, so I was talking about emotional coaching. How does it impact your child? Emotion coaching gives children EQ, advantage, right? Children become comfortable, um, experience their feelings, learn healthy forms of self-expression, can problem solve. This makes them better at reading other people's emotions, which in turn has a positive effect on relationships with their peers, family, teachers. They grow up to be confident and are better able to tackle uh, life's challenges and have a better sense of well-being. So there are four types of We can't hear you, Sukaina. This and, and it is this behavior which usually leads to an exclusion. Um, Sukaina, do you prefer us to reschedule this? Because I think it's really important um, bits. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I think with the internet being unstable, um, I don't, yeah, I don't want anybody to miss this bit because it's really interesting. Uh, we've gone through the whole, the whole topic. Um, okay. Do you think we can reschedule it? What do you, what do you suggest? Sure, I'm okay with it. Just that the ladies are still online, so I feel I'm obligated to finish it. Let me, let me ask them what they want to do because I think it is really important. And if they want to absorb what you've said so far, um, um, and you know, digest it into little chunks. Um, are you guys ladies want to continue or do you want to give it another shot? Okay. I think Somebody said reschedule on the chat in the, they are answering in the chat. Okay, now maybe if you turn off your video and, and just share screen, uh, because right now it's going fine. We can hear you straight. 
All right, fine. Let me do that. Okay. Yeah. I'll stop the video. Let's give it one more try. Inshallah. Let's recite a salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Yeah. Let's see. All right, then you keep me posted, right? Uh, Muhadisa, if, I mean, Musarat, if you want me to stop, right? Yes, yeah, that's fine. Let, yeah. Let's just try, okay? okay? Helping our children to stay calm and do not and not flip their lid reduces the risk of serious behavior. And it is uh, this behavior which usually leads to an exclusion in school. When children are angry, their thinking brain isn't connected to their downstairs stairs brain. And so they are really, they aren't able to listen to you and reason with you and follow your instructions. So we need to help them put their lid back on first, then we can talk to them about their behavior. So as you guys remember from the first talk I did, I talked about the brain, right? The upstairs brain, the prefrontal cortex, it's still not developed in the little ones. In fact, it develops till, it's, it finishes developing by age 22. So neo, neocortex, yeah? controls language, logic, problem solving choices, right? And the limbic brain, which controls the feelings and attachments, memories, uh, is the emotional brain where we feel our anger. See, that's where we feel our anger and this is our rational brain. So when we do emotional coaching and we start naming and noticing the emo emotions and labeling it for the child, what happens is we integrate this part, right? So we they have flipped their lid and this is out, so they can't reason with you. But as you start naming and noticing and labeling the, um, uh, what do you say, emotions, mirroring it for them, reiterating and repeating what they are feeling, what happens is they start calming down and they go into rational brain. Then what happens is now they can communicate, right? So it's important to understand this. Just as a traumatic experience can alter a life in an instant, so too can a th therapeutic encounter, all right? So you need to understand emotional coaching is like therapy. Being present for your child is so important. If there is any damage done during the parenting process, which I just discussed, uh, different kinds of parenting, then emotional coaching is like therapy. It will really help the child feel their feelings, be emotionally intelligent. If we focus uh, on knowing our children using emotions um, coaching rather than adult control behaviors, it asks us you, it asks you to reflect as a parent uh, on four key areas. So this is by Dan Siegel, right? He talks about can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Go on. Yeah. Okay. So this is powerful and yet simple to do, right? This exercise is simple to do you can't hear again no um it's okay now we can't hear you i mean yeah what do you say I think, um, is, it, is it okay if we can reschedule? Because I think a lot of ladies have got quite a few questions to ask. Um, yeah, but the, you know, I have to finish it so then they can ask because it, this is half knowledge. Which no, that's is fine. No, I mean, um, after the session, we've got questions to ask. And obviously that's the core bit where they want your expert advice in there. Um, and um, I don't know what you suggest. Um, can you give us another? Would you be able to reschedule for another? another yes, day? I don't mind. I don't mind. Just that the ladies will feel it's repet repetitive now because now I've almost finished. You can give us some homework to do. That way it will be <laughs> new core material. But yes. Um, well, the homework would be start doing those five things I told you or three things at least. Emphasize, validate, you know, be present. Uh, don't be angry. That's yeah. all I would say, you know, don't, don't lose it when your children say to you, I hate you. <laughs> or they oh, say, goodness. you are a mean mom. Hold that boundary with calmness. Okay. So you, you are present and you don't take it personally, you know, and I know that people have issues with respect, but you have to model respect. Remember that, that is conscious parenting. Model respect to get respect. So at that time, 
don't go into the uh, you know lecture mode <laughs> that is just going to ruin your relationship yeah mm -hmm. so it's okay we can reschedule maybe you can uh, tell me when again yeah. and uh, all the parents can do the work hopefully of uh, staying with the feeling validating being present problem solving very important we rescue children you know we give them solutions so don't, they never think out of the box then now when they are 18 they find it very hard to make decisions so very important to liberate our children from our thinking and let them think out of the box definitely so hopefully uh, we can apply what we've learned today Yes. Um, and then we can get back to you and say, what did we find more challenging? What do we need a bit more help in? Um, yes. I think that would be better because obviously you've given so many practical examples um, and inshallah, we can apply that as well. So I will um, update everyone inshallah in the group uh, when the next session will be. Um, and in the meantime, you're okay to share the PowerPoint as well. If anybody wants to go back to it and uh, oh, I'll share. I, I'll share yeah. The yeah, I can see Yasmin saying here, we missed key points. Mm. Yeah, well, one of them was the four kinds of parenting. You mentioned disapproving, oh, yeah. um, dismissive, and then yeah, the lazy yeah. And then we missed the fourth one. We were waiting for it. So if you want okay, to shed a little light on coaching. it. So actually what happened was the fourth one is the emotional coaching, right? So the, doing it the correct way. So, you know, when I did talk about conscious parenting, I did say these needs have to be met. And when you do emotional coaching, half of your troubles will be gone because, you know, you'd be able to relate to the children in an emotional manner and uh, you'll have a very strong relationship and you will be so proud of yourself because when the children will come to you and they will come and apologize to you, they, you know, they will come and hug you and they'll say, I was so disrespectful, please forgive me. You know, they, yesterday my son told me why I'm sharing this is because I'm being vulnerable. I mm -hmm. know everybody's struggling with parenting, 100%. That goes without saying we, are, we all need to heal ourselves, right? He comes to me yesterday and he says to me, mom, I'm so... Uh, proud of you I'm so happy you made me so mature because when a girl was trying to hug him he pushed back and he had the words to tell her I honor our friendship but I respect my values so very important when children don't know how to do it and we need to explain to them by not making it a big deal right don't make it a big deal and because with teenagers things will happen you'll have to have those difficult talks you have to talk about sex at what age are you going to talk and how are you going to talk? I don't remember our parents talking about these things. And now it's not only about sex, it's about many other things, right? So inshallah, we'll have another talk about how to have that talk with your child and what is age appropriate? How are you going to do this? So this is uh, all important, right? So on that note, thank you ladies for attending. I really appreciate your time and I'm so sorry but uh, these are the challenges of uh, having a technical difficulty. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you so much. Um, I think next week is half term holidays. So maybe we can leave next week. And this is a good time uh, for parents to practice these techniques as well, because we've got a bit more hands in our um, time in our hands as well during half term. I don't know whether that's a positive or negative way, but um, we will have more time with our kids next week. So a lot of time to practice our techniques. And hopefully the week after we'll probably all be experts and um, something to share with each other as well. Um, sure, so I'd thank love, you. I'd love good feedback. I'd love to know how it went yeah. because mind you, you will feel it. You'll feel angry when your child is angry. So <laughs> self-regulation is a, is a skill to learn. Nothing that you can't do. Just make sure you have mantras, you know, some sort of zikr that mm. you are, we can even do a talk on anger transformed, which I did last uh, a few days ago for Dubai people. So these are other skills that you know you can acquire and you can do this. It's so easy. I'm sure you can. You have the power. Um, you know, when um, I think it will be a bit of a challenge, especially when you've got if you've got siblings as well and you're trying to work with one, um, obviously relating to their feelings. And then you've got the other two, um, obviously, if they're older as well and they're thinking what's happened to mom. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's again another talk sibling rivalry. <laughs> Uh, there you go we won't let you leave so soon so inshallah we'll have more sessions with ikra library with sister sukaina you can see she's passionate she's keen to um you know help us all out and inshallah we uh, will go through this together so thank you so much to everyone for your patience uh, apologies on the internet side but hey uh, we get to see you all again next time um, so thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Sukaina. Um, if you can share the PowerPoint with me and I'll share it in the Ikra Library WhatsApp group and we'll share the recording as well. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy your day. Khudafiz. Khudafiz.